Sometimes it's kind of fun to create sort of a pan and zoom effect where you move across an image and then zoom to feature one particular part of that image. So here's an example where we're panning across a group of people and then at the end we can zoom on this one particular guy to get a little bit more information. This can be a nice technique if you're presenting maybe an e-learning scenario where you're showing how a particular person might respond to a challenge or a question. Here's another example. In this one, I've got a row of frogs and other little creatures. And if we pan across the group of them, then when we get to the end where the snake appears, we can zoom and hear a little bit more about him. So let's see how we build something like this. What you can do is create your own panoramic image by piecing together several individual images. So in this example, um, I just used several images of people, and most of these images I got free from elearningart.com as a free download. And then I just selected them all and grouped them as one image. And this back part here, this background, is just a blue rectangle that I created with PowerPoint shapes. And then I drew this brown rectangle over top of that. What we're going to do here is build two slides, one for the pan and one for the zoom. And we need to kind of start with the end in mind. So I'm going to select my panoramic image and position it at the place where I want the panning motion to stop. So in other words, I'm going to feature this guy right here, so I want him to be right in the middle of my slide. And then I'm going to add a duplicate of this slide. So we'll come over here and right click on the thumbnail and choose duplicate slide. And the first slide here is where we're going to apply the motion. This is a little bit tricky. Even though my ultimate plan is to have the image move to the right, what we're going to do is apply a motion path to the left and then reverse the path direction. And what that does is it makes sure that the stopping point of this image is exactly lined up with the duplicate image on my next slide because we want it to look real fluid, right? Like it's actually one slide. We don't even want a one pixel jump. So with my panoramic image selected, I'm going to come over to my custom animation window, choose add effect, motion paths, and then choose left. And now we need to do a little bit of fine tuning. First thing is um, I'm going to right click on the path and choose reverse path direction. And I'm also going to change the start of this animation to with previous so that it's going to begin as soon as the slide appears. Another thing that we want to do is um, make this motion path quite a bit longer. It's pretty short right here. In fact, we're going to extend this green arrow. I'm going to hold on my shift key and just stretch this green arrow all the way off the left edge of my slide. And this, um, this way it's going to cause that um, image to start way over here at the left so that we see the entire line of people as they move across the slide to the right. And this is something that you'll need to play with a little bit um, as far as the length of your motion path depending on the size of the image that you're using. The other thing that you'll want to adjust is the timing. So let's come back over here, select the motion path, and then choose timing. And I'm going to set this one at about six seconds. That feels about right to me um, because I might want to, you know, fit in a little bit of narration or something while we're panning across these people. So let's look at this preview. This looks pretty good and it looks like we're stopping in about the right place. So that looks good. Now let's think about how we can zoom in on this last character here, this guy. What I've already done here is um, on slide three I created a larger version of that same image. I just copied the same graphic and then I sized it up a, uh, quite a bit to take up most of the slide. And then I used PowerPoint's cropping tool, which you can get to from the Format tab and then choose Crop just to get rid of the part of the image that I didn't need. And I grouped that image with the same blue rectangle that I used for the background of the previous slides. Now, now that I've made my zoom, I'm just going to go ahead and right click and cut from this slide, move to slide two, and then I'm going to paste it right over the images on slide two. And now we just need to add that zoom animation. So with that image selected, I'm going to choose add effect, entrance, and then choose faded zoom. And once again, I'm going to choose the start to be uh, with previous so that it happens as soon as the slide appears. And then from here, if you wanted to, you could add, you know, a thought bubble over here or a call out like I did in the example that we saw earlier. And now we can also get rid of this third slide here. We can just delete that because that was really just a working area. It wasn't part of my presentation. Okay, so just to show you another look at how this appears when you publish from Presenter, here's how that panning motion is going to look. And then at the end of the pan, then we can zoom in to feature this one particular character that appears at the end. So I hope that maybe gives you some new ideas for ways you can liven up your scenarios with motion paths and zooming.